and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called This, you may ask? So I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I, so my guests and I like to help you establish what you need to know in your present. And also, I do like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Stacey O'Callaghan. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for your content, for watching this show live at a later date, as it does mean a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I'm a transformational coach and trainer who will assist you to heal your past, create your future, and transform your present so that you can take charge of your destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use angelic Reiki, future life progression, past life regression, guided meditation, angel oracle cards to assist you on your journey, especially if you're feeling lost and you want to get clear on your reason for being here. And I've also created several transformational packages, a journey through lifetimes, as well as a six week guided meditation series to help you gain confidence to take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of the show covers various themes of your journey. I'm in a guided meditation or an angel oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Stacey O'Callaghan, about how we can go from thriving to from surviving to thriving. Now, Stacey is the founder of CJS Coaching Services, and as a Thrive Specialist, she uses a blend of psychological techniques to help people make meaningful changes to their life and work so that they can thrive instead of just survive. Now, Stacey spent 14 years helping people and businesses achieve their goals and has an extensive background in psychology, including mindset, behavior change, strategy, coaching, communication, leadership, and conflict. Now, as a result of working with Stacey, her clients report feeling an abundance of happiness, life and work satisfaction, and resilience in times of continuous change. Now, with testimonials such as, Stacey helped me when planning my work-life balance for going back to work after becoming a mum. She helped me structure my thoughts and was able to guide me to create my own goals and plans. My coaching experience with Stacey made me feel confident to go back to work as a working mum. She's amazing. I would highly recommend. And during our sessions with Stacey, or sorry, during the sessions with Stacey, we worked on my confidence within the workplace and healthy living to enable me to lose weight. This was the first time I've been coached, so I didn't know what to expect. But I can truly say I found each session useful and I've looked forward to having them. And I would definitely recommend them to others. So without further delay, hello, Stacey, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hey Ray, thanks so much for having me. I am very well, thank you. And I'm really excited about having this conversation with you. Brilliant. So before we do get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts live or on the replay as both Stacey and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. So Stacey, why don't you tell us more about your journey and how we can go from surviving to thriving? Yeah, so I think the, the, the theme going from surviving to thriving is, is really important to me, um, not only because I've helped people um, time and time again achieve this, this journey, but I've actually been on the journey myself multiple times. And what I found along my journey is that we tend to create a, a life for ourselves based on other people's expectations. So perhaps we have this ideal image of ourselves or we have this vision of who we want to be. So we create a life based on that. Or perhaps we have our friends and family telling us that we should be doing this, we should be doing that, we should want to achieve these things. And society as well tells us what success looks like. So we go on this path to success. And then what happens is we get there and we're like, oh, is that, is that it? Why, why am I not happy? What, what's wrong with me? You know, I have everything that people tell me that I should want or I should need, but there's something missing and I'm not happy. And I, so I feel disillusioned and I feel discontent and I feel dissatisfied. And this has happened to me a number of times in my life, but the, the point for me um, where I found coaching really changed my life because I was living a life where I had a good career, I had a great partner, I had a home, roof over my head, food on my table. I should have been happy, right? But I wasn't. And I didn't understand why I wasn't happy. And I felt guilty 
because I wasn't happy because I felt like I shouldn't want more right and then I found coaching and I had a coaching session and it changed my life because it made me realize what was missing it made me realize that I had created this life based on everybody else's expectations of me what they wanted for me not what I wanted for myself and I had core beliefs that were holding me back like I couldn't do the things I wanted to do because I'd be letting people down so I created this life for myself based on other people's expectations of what I should want and I wasn't happy. And having a coach kind of peel away the layers and show me that a single core belief was completely controlling my life was like mind blown. And so that kind of set me on a mission to actually be living in alignment, actually living a life that I wanted, that I was happy with. And so that's the path from surviving to thriving, going from reacting to life, letting life happen to you, not being particularly happy. I mean, not being totally miserable, but not being completely happy, knowing there's something missing, not knowing what that missing piece is. And then kind of one day waking up, it could be a life event, it could be a coach, it could be a therapist, but somebody one day will have a conversation with you and will make you realize there's so much more to life than what I'm currently doing. I'm not completely happy. And there is a way to be completely happy and that will then set you on that path to, from surviving to thriving. And one of the first pieces of that journey is building that self-awareness, understanding, hold on a second, I'm not completely happy. And then identifying why, what's the reason for it, what's going on. And very often you have to have conversations with professionals who can truly help you do that because you need the safe space. You need that non-judgmental conversation. You need somebody to truly listen to you rather than give you advice, right? Because as a professional coach and therapist, I'm not here to give you advice. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to support and empower you to find the right path for yourself. And that to me is what the surviving to thriving journey is. It's finding the right path for you so that you can be truly happy. Excellent. Yeah. And I, I mean, you say you, you had your, your, your own experience of it. So, mm -hmm. what, so what did life look like when you were just surviving? Yeah. So for me, life, life looked like I was in a, a nine to five office job. I was working for a company who, I mean, I was helping people, um, but I was working for a company who wanted me to do things or work in a way that didn't align with my values. I wasn't able to help people in the way that I wanted to help them. I wasn't able to commit in the way that I wanted to commit. I was in a position where I had to compromise my personal values on a daily basis. I was still doing what I wanted to do, but I wasn't, wasn't doing it in a way that I wanted to do it, which meant that I had this misalignment between what was going on in here and what I wanted and how I was having to behave on the external. It also, surviving also feels exhausting, you're tired. You have no energy because there's because of the misalignment. The misalignment is very draining. And also you're very tired, which means you neglect yourself. So your self-care decreases, which means you have poor sleep. You have, you know, your physical health isn't ideal. Your mental health isn't great because you're not able to have the capacity to think about other things. You're not able to put yourself first. And then your values and beliefs are trapping you. They're keeping you stuck in that survival state of mind, which means that you don't have time or you think you don't have time for yourself. You always put other people first. So you're putting your friends before yourself, you're putting your family before yourself all of the time on a consistent basis. And actually very often you don't even think about yourself. You don't even think about what you want or how you're feeling. You just get up every day, you react to what's in front of you and you go to bed in the evening, hoping you're gonna get enough sleep to be able to do it again tomorrow. Um, yeah, and that, that kind of defines the survival state really. Yeah. Yeah, which which is kind of like you know, where when you when you look around and you speak to people, it's it's kind of like a lot of a lot of people yeah. um, uh, do that on a on a on a daily basis yeah. without actually realizing um, that, that that they're do, they're doing that. So so what's a, what are the biggest obstacles that you see that that stop people thriving? Yeah, so the biggest for me is a kind of I've, I've kind of mentioned a couple of them already, but core beliefs is a big one. Having a belief that has been created or built in you from your childhood, from your teenage years, from your young adult years that holds you back. So some something like I'm not worthy. 
I don't deserve this. This is as good as it's going to get for me. Those kind of beliefs can really hold you back and they impact your self-belief, they impact your confidence, um, which means you don't take risks, which means you don't ch check in with yourself. Very often it means you don't trust your intuition. So you don't trust when, when your body is telling you that, that something's not quite right. Um, another big one is expectations. We, we build these expectations of what we think our life should look like, what the world should look like, what our relationships should look like, what our career should look like. It's all these shoulds. I call them shoulds. Sort your shoulds out. Listen to your shoulds because your should is not defining what you want. It's, a should puts all this pressure on you and it makes you feel like you have to do something. And actually you don't. It's all those expectations that are piling on your shoulders that make you feel like you should be doing these things. And these expectations could come from you completely, or they could come from your partner or your friends or your family or society. I think especially for women, society has this defined role of what we should look like, should look like. So there's all these expectations and pressures that kind of pile up on our shoulders, which keep us in survival mode because we just don't have capacity for, for anything else. And then there's just general kind of, limiting beliefs or pests i like to call them pests things that get in the way right so a belief like i don't have time i can't do something they can kind of stop you doing things on a, on a daily basis or a pest might be something that you have to do on a daily basis and it takes up all your time and it sucks all your energy or like a pest for example could be a friend or a family member that you love and you want to support but when you spend time with them they just drain you and you feel totally exhausted by the negativity, by the drama, by the crisis. So those pests on a daily basis, again, if you don't manage them correctly, they can also stop you from uh, going from surviving to thriving and keep you in that survival space. Yeah, makes makes a lot of sense. And we, and we do tend, um, especially as women, to take on an awful lot of stuff that's not ours. Yeah. Um, be, be, again, it's something that we've been conditioned are, um, you know, through millennia um, to, to, to do that. So, so because this has been conditioned for so long and it is so prevalent, how, how do we overcome it? How can we overcome it? Yeah, I mean, the first step is identifying it, is saying, hold up, this is actually happening. So it's building that self-awareness. It's understanding that, for example, the belief of I don't have time is stopping me from getting the qualification that I want to have the career that I want, or is stopping me from going to the gym in the evening so I don't feel as healthy as I want to be, or is stopping me from spending quality time with family because all I have capacity for is work. It's identifying it, it's building that self-awareness so you know what's stopping you doing the things you want to be doing and where it's coming from. Where is this belief coming from? Digging deeper into your values and your beliefs and your past to understand why it exists, where it's coming from. Once you're there, you can then start to reframe. You can then start to change the narrative and you can then say, okay, I don't have time. I have this come up with my clients a lot. So I do this exercise called finding time because we all have the same amount of time on a daily basis, right? And when you start to practically look at how much time you have, you, basically what I do is I say, okay, so there's so many minutes in this amount of time, so like a day or a week or whatever, how many of those minutes are you eating, sleeping, showering? What do you do outside of that time? So it could be school run, it could be working, it could be commuting, it could be watching TV. When you break it down and you look at how you're spending your time, suddenly you're like, whoa, but I definitely don't need to be watching Netflix six hours a day. For example, being on Facebook 24 yeah. seven, Tik TikTok. Yes. Some, some, some people I know have got so addicted to it. It takes yeah. up their whole life. Absolutely. Or like, okay, so I'm going to be commuting two hours out of my day every day. What else can I do whilst I'm commuting? Can I be reading a book? Can I be watching the show so I don't have to watch it when I get home? Can I be studying? So when you break it down, so it's, it's a practical and logical kind of way to look at a belief like I don't have time. When you break it down, it's like, whoa, I do have time. If I substitute some of the other things, and I'm not saying stop watching Netflix, I'm saying <laughs> cut it down. Look at your priorities and think about, 
okay, so I could I could watch my favorite show as a reward. I could do an hour studying and then I could watch my show. Or okay, instead of watching my show for three hours in the evening, I could do it for two hours and get an early night or go to the gym or whatever it is that you want to achieve. But it's about that self-awareness, understanding what it's stopping you from doing, coming up with a practical problem solving action taking plan to help you overcome that and reminding yourself of why you want to overcome it right because you have to have a goal in mind in order to create that motivation so it could be I don't have time which means I can't do the qualification I want to do which means I can't change my career which means I'm going to be miserable in my job for the next however many years right so you break down how much time you have you identify blocks in that schedule where you do have time and then you think, OK, so I do have time on a Friday or a Saturday or whatever it is where you do have time. And then you start making small substitutes. And I'm not saying stop doing your general routine. I'm saying just make small, tiny adjustments. I'm going to do half an hour here or an hour here and then replace one thing with another thing. Wait a few weeks. See how that feels when that becomes comfortable. Go back to that exercise. Do it again. I mean, I've done this exercise myself. I had a limiting belief of I don't have time to do my coaching qualifications when I was working full time in, in, in business in the city. And I did this exercise and I realized, oh, I do have time. And I started reading in my, in my uh, commute and I started doing exercises in my lunch break. And I cut down my TV time in the evening so I could do more studying in the evening. But what I did eventually was I dedicated specific days to specific tasks because that worked better for me. So you know yourself. You know what works for you because you've been successful in the past. Look at your past successes and how you achieved them and implement lessons and learnings from those things into the problem you're trying to solve right now. It will help. Yeah, that, that, sounds, that sounds ideal. Yeah, and I, I occasionally will sit down and go, Okay, let me look at let me look at my week coming up. Yeah, you know, wh where where you know where can I find time? Oh, okay, yes, I've uh, I've been uh, reading a little bit too much. Okay, let's yeah. um, let, let's let's do this. So it it definitely does work, and that's a brilliant and a really easy thing for people to do because I think sometimes we f we think that we things are co we have to make things complicated mm. to actually do it, but from the way from what you're saying it's it's really quite quite straightforward and simple to actually um to actually um, go from surviving to thriving yeah build that awareness decide what you want instead and take small manageable actions once you've done those three things give it a few weeks reflect back on that journey what's working what's not working and then repeat the process do it again yeah, that sounds really that sounds really good so you know well, what does it actually, um, I mean, we're talking about surviving to thriving, but what does it mean to be truly thriving um, in, in your life? You know, how, how would you know if you are? Yeah, I mean, being, I mean, first of all, each de definition of thriving is different. So my definition of thriving is different from your definition of thriving, which is what I truly love because it strips away all the expectations, all the judgment, all the shoves, and you can actually be free to define what thriving really looks like for you. And what I find with my clients is as we go through the journey of surviving to thriving, we get to thriving and then they want something different. They're like, actually, now thriving looks like this and looks like that and looks like the other, which is just incredible because it's fluid and it changes as you grow and evolve and your definition of thriving will grow as well. Um, but you'll, you'll essentially go from surviving to thriving. And then when you work with me, the, the best piece of work that I do with you is keeping you in that state and teaching you and and, and learning how to how to continue to thrive even if you want something different you're still in that state of thriving and for me thriving is living in alignment with yourself being so what's going on in here your core values your beliefs is in alignment with the, the world that you've created so if love is a is a value you have loving friendships loving relationships if career is is something that's important to you you've created a career that is fulfilling because very often it's not actually about, you know, getting the promotion or getting the financial reward. It's about having a fulfilling career. So we look at what that might look like for you. So the first thing, thing we do is define what thriving looks like for you. And then we take steps to get to that thriving place. 
whilst dealing with the blockers and any underlining values and beliefs and past experiences that might be getting in your way. So for me, the definition of thriving is you achieving that place where you want to go, but also you having that resilience and that mindset and that transformational change so that you feel able to manage that state moving forwards so that you can pursue an independent path to thriving beyond the sessions that we've done together. So you have that resilience, you have that confidence, you have that self-belief, you're happy, you're fulfilled. You wake up every day feeling confident in yourself and feeling happy, like truly happy, like I'm living the life that I wanted to live. Life is what I was expecting it to be. Now, don't get me wrong, that's not gonna happen every single day of your life, right? That's just not realistic. Life is a roller coaster. Life goes up and down. But when you're thriving, the bad days, the bad, the days where you get up and you're exhausted or you don't have motivation, you're more able to get through them because you already have capacity. You're already taking care of yourself. You're already doing all right, which means that when life throws those curveballs and, you know, you have, you're going through a difficult time, you have the skills, the mindset, the ability to overcome those things easier than what you would if you were in survival mode. Because in survival mode, you're already barely, barely doing okay. And when something hits you in survival mode, it's just too much. It's too much for you to manage. So when you're thriving, life still happens to you, but it's like you're able to manage it. You're able to proactively or easily overcome all of the challenges that come your way because you have the skills and the mindset to be able to do that. And the confidence and belief in yourself to give yourself the freedom to take the action that's necessary to get through what you're going through. Yeah, that makes so, so much sense, you know, and listen to you, to, listen to you talking, it makes so much, <laughs> so, so, so much sense, you, you know, you've kind of explained it so clearly and succinctly and it's kind of like, okay, yeah, I can see, I can see how this, I can see how Stacey could help me, oh yeah, I could put that in, implement um, in, 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 into things. So yeah, thank you so much um, for that. Now, as you know, I um, do angel oracle card readings and I do uh, guide meditations. So each week I like to ask my guests what they would like. So Stacey, would you like me to pull an angel oracle card or would you like me to do a mini guided meditation for you and those watching? I would like an angel oracle card, please. <laughs> Funny enough, I've got them in my hand. Amazing, <laughs> you <man>. already knew. <laughs> it's amazing how many people actually, it actually throws me sometimes when somebody goes, actually, can you do a mini guided meditation? I'm like, oh, okay. Because <laughs> most people do tend, and why not? Cards are absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and they give us so much um, information and guidance. Now, of course, when I do the cards, I do the cards for what you need to know for your high good at this moment in time. Although I work with their own past lives, when I take people back to past lives, it's to heal and clear those so they can be fully present in the here and now. And when I take people into the future, it's so they can understand and know the future to come back to the present. So it's, it's always being in fully in the present as we speak. So. What does Stace? Oh, okay. Oh, they decided there's going to be a load of jump in there. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to narrow it down just to these ones that jumped. See what they want to come up with. Mm. So what does Stacey and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? So let's see what we get. Okay ties in perfectly with what you've been with what mm -hmm. you've been talking about an absolute confirmation view from above get the big picture yeah how perfect so is that beautiful to, mm -hmm. to time with exactly what you've been talking about so again it's you know confirmation about what you've been what you've been saying you know we need to view things from above to get to get the bigger picture because sometimes we 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 just see that one that one view that 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 one action rather than seeing everything that's going on um, mm. around it. Um, so yeah, it's confirmation for you and for those that are watching. It's kind of like look at the bigger picture. Whatever is going on in your life at the moment, there is much more around it. So if there's some conflict or anything going on with somebody or a particular situation. Take yourself out of it, just rise above it and look down. Okay, 
what might be behind it because there might be reasons that you're not aware of that could have an impact that you could actually say a different word act a different way which would actually turn that 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 situation around um so yeah that's that's a brilliant card to uh to to come out and i just love the way it is really confirmation about what you've been to, talking about and for, and for you personally it is confirmation that you are on the right path you know mm. you're looking at that stuff from a higher from a higher perspective and actually getting clear on where you're going so um it's absolutely brilliant card um to come out so stacy do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers yeah i think so one of the questions i get asked most is how do i how do I start my journey? I mean, where do I start my journey from surviving to thriving? And what I would, what I, what I like to share is, is something that's really simple, but it's just starting to live with intention, intentionally take action. So every day, ask yourself, how am I feeling today? Am I good? Am I bad? Am I in pain? What's going on for me today? And then how can I make today just that little bit better than yesterday? And it's something, it could be something really small. It could be, I'm going to kick myself breakfast today rather than grabbing it on the go. Or I'm going to call my friend. I miss my friend. Or I'm going to take some self-care time tonight. I'm going to spend an hour reading my book and doing something that I really enjoy. But living with intention, what you'll start to find is that you're adding more joy into your life. You're adding more happiness. You're adding more things that you actually want to be doing. So you're pushing away, pushing, to, pushing, pushing the shoulds to one side and doing the things you actually want to do. So the questions again are, how am I feeling today? How can I make today just that little bit better than yesterday? And that's something really simple to, to journal on or to ask yourself in the morning when you're on the way to work so that you can start to make small, meaningful changes to your life. Absolutely perfect. And I love easy things. They're so straightforward, not complicated, and you can do, um, you know, and don't take too, too long um, doing it. You know, you could even do it whilst you're cleaning your teeth. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's, that's brilliant. Thank you so much for that. So I hope everyone that you've enjoyed this conversation and found it insightful because I know I definitely have. So Stacey, if people want to connect with you, how do they do that? Yeah, so I am on social media. So I'm on, I spend a lot of time on Instagram at SJS Coaching Services. Um, I'm also on LinkedIn. If you look at my name, Stacey O'Callaghan, and you can find my website, which is www.sjscoachingservices.com. And on there, I have a lot of free resources available for you if you are interested in starting your journey. Um, you can request a copy of my How to Thrive Guide, which will give you 10 simple steps to take on a daily basis to help you go from surviving to thriving. I also talk you through actions and activities that you can take right now to start your journey independently. I also have what I call my SJS Coaching Services Hub which if you sign up to my newsletter, you get access to a whole hub of personal development tools. And these tools are there to help you start that journey in self-awareness, help you build awareness in the areas of your life that will be impacting you if you are surviving rather than thriving. So it's all about solving that first piece of the puzzle, that, that building that self-awareness so that you get to a point where you understand why you're feeling the things that you're feeling. So, all of that is available on my website, www.sjscoachingservices.com. And finally, if you are interested in coaching, but you've never had coaching before, one of the things that I do is a complimentary coaching experience. And um, as I said right at the beginning of this uh, conversation, my journey to thriving really started with a coaching session. So what I like to do, I gift back to, to, to the world, to the universe, we're offering complimentary coaching sessions to people who are struggling right now, who are surviving right now. It's one hour of coaching with me. At the end of the coaching, you're going to have an action plan and it's going to help you move forward and help you make positive changes to your life. It's not a sales pitch. It's I'm gifting you a coaching experience to help you change your life. At the end of that session, if you wanted to have a conversation about how you could then work with me, then of course we can have that conversation, but it's a no strings attached conversation. So if you are surviving right now, or if you are wanting to know more about how, what coaching looks like, 
book yourself into a complimentary coaching experience and we can share we can share the the journey from surviving to thriving together absolutely brilliant thank you so much for that and what i will do is i'll put all the links in the comments um literally they can just click on it and go straight to those links so so you don't have to go searching for them um, they'll, they'll be on the comments Perfect. Um, thank you so much ray oh that's that's no problem thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your wisdom it's been absolutely brilliant and of course, for those watching, if you have reached a crossroads in your life and you need some guidance in stepping onto your spiritual path and getting clear on your journey and how to get there, then I would love to be that guide for you. You know, so please feel free to connect with me so that we can arrange a free uh, video clarity call um, to discuss where you are now and how you can move forward to take charge of your destiny. And of course, please feel free to join my weekly newsletter and receive a free future life progression recording where I take you into a future lifetime so you can get some clarity and guidance um, that you can use in your current life as well as a couple of other free gifts. So thank you so much for watching and I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And of course, if you are watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to be notified of when the show goes live or I post new guided meditations. And I look forward to you all joining me same time, same place next week. Take care. Bye.